Praise God. Exodus chapter 2. And let's look at verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. You know, sometimes God puts things in our spirit. Yes. He conceives things in us with the seeds of divine intention. Yes. His will, His purpose. Mm. And being, if we can say it, impregnated with that promise. That's right. There are times that in our own insecurity, in our own lack of being able to see ourselves in the light of what God is doing. We simply take the promise and we hide it. And we pray over it. And we dress it up. And we secure a safe place where nobody knows what God is doing. But there comes a time in a ministry, in a life, in a church, that after a while what God has said He's going to do, you can't hide it anymore. She tried to hide this child three months when she could no longer hide him. The Bible tells us she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to see what would be done. I feel like I'm about to preach to some people today that you've done your best to prepare a place for it. A place where it's safe. But there comes a time where God says, now give it back to me. Like jockey bed in days of old, she waded out into the reeds of the Nile and she simply pushed that basket with tears running down her face out into the current. Come on. And that's where the hand of God picks up. That's right. And carries Moses into the house of Pharaoh and the seeds of deliverance were planted. That's right. You listen to this preacher tonight. I hope that I can say something that will help inspire your spirit. Yes. That God is in complete control yes, is. of what He's doing. Yes, is. And when you release that back to God tonight, there comes a time you've got to do like His sister. She simply followed along to see what would happen. Praise God. God is doing some great things. And right now, for some of you, it's in the unseen realm of the Spirit. But I promise you what God is doing, He's about to bring to the forefront. Yeah. He's about to bring it to light. Yeah. And all you've got to do is keep being faithful right. in the direction that you're headed with the Lord. Right. Praise God. Put your Bibles down. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Pastor, will you pray for us tonight? So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the message, oh God. Tonight. Open our ears and our hearts to receive. Speak, oh God, as though it were from the throne directly to our need, oh God. We trust you tonight. Our hope is in you. We are ready in your expectations of what you want to say. You receive it with all thanksgiving tonight, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Turn around and tell somebody else that that's you too. God is making some arrangements. God bless you tonight. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Unable to comprehend the magnitude of His words, 
The Bible tells us that Sarah listened intently to the preposterous dream of her husband Abraham to raise up an innumerable seed unto the glory of God. Yes. And so she pronounces herself incapable of being part of such an idiotic and crazy plan. So she sets out to circumvent the announcement that came by the mouth of angelic host. All too aware of her age and that of her husband Abraham, she was determined to take herself out of the picture of God's artistry. But God had made some arrangements. And so we read that Sarah becomes the mother of millions and an innumerable host of people. His attention being arrested by a bush that burned yet was not consumed. We see that Moses was chosen to become Israel's great deliverer from Egypt. But feeling his own inadequacy, as many of us do, he begins to proclaim, Lord, I cannot speak. And yet through the stuttering words of his own insignificance, the Lord simply speaks a word for him to be reassured in. And he says, don't worry about it, son. Your brother Aaron is on his way to help you. And so we find his staff becomes a serpent. His hand becomes leprous and then whole again. And seeing that God would not be persuaded, Moses pulls out the trump card. I can't speak. And the Lord said, that's all right. Go in this, thy power. Because I am with thee, saith the Lord. And so Moses takes his hat to Egypt, leaving the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel on the move to their Canaan simply because God had made some arrangements. Amen. We right. find in the scripture cowering behind the wine press, threshing out a meager means of existence. Gideon is startled by an angel who's muttering something about Israel marching on to victory. But here a man who realizes his own inability. He is all too aware of his insignificance. He quickly jumps on the defensive for he knows that the score sheet is not on Israel's side. The numbers are not in their favor. And he declares, Lord, what am I? My tribe is the smallest. My family, they're the poorest. And I am the least in all of my family. But here the Lord speaks a word of encouragement to him and says, Go in this thy might. I want somebody here to understand that men like Gideon, as the Bible said, he faces 300 nameless men and says it's time to march. It's time to move on. And with those few men, they march in the enemy's hand. Sometimes we need to come to the place where we recognize afresh and anew the awareness of God's plans for our life tonight. We come to a place many times. We are stalemated. We are pushed in on every side. But there seems to be no way out. It's that time you must remember the promise that God has made to you. It's in those moments of discouragement. You've got to get your eyes off of yourself and what you don't have. And start looking to the world. has come that we uh, too must allow that spirit uh, of awareness to seize us where we cast our entire dependence upon a God who never fails, a God whose plans are sure, and a God whose divine arrangements, amen, will always come to pass. I submit to you in this
this service that God has an arrangement for your life. God has spoken to some of you who sit under the sound of my voice. And what God said, I assure you, God will do what he said he would do. He will bring it to pass through the dying of the eye and the crossing of the teeth. He will fulfill his word. Amen. Amen. Everything that was said and even the attentions that were never spoken. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. God has plans for us. We are his people. Yes. It is the will of God for us to push through to those places of revival where we see people filled with the Holy Ghost yes. and broken lives transformed. Oh it God. is the will of God for us to go forth with, even when we don't understand and be assured in this fact that God is going to be our helper. Somebody say amen. Yes. In fact, the Bible said that he is our helper. There is no reason for us to fear uh, what men may do. Uh, I submit to you that regardless uh, of what you're struggling through, uh, the unresolved questions in your mind, uh, the conflict in your internal spirit, uh, that God has a promise uh, that he is about to bring uh, to the forefront. Uh, and all of the opposition, uh, and all of the attack of the enemy, uh, and those that say it can be done, uh, Satan's in time to discourage your spirit. God's going to watch it. Let them see what he does in your life. Let your hands to the Lord. Throughout the pages of the scripture, we are aware of all the powerful principles that God has given to us to ensure our spiritual success. We talked about spiritual success this morning. We talked about how God's Word has that design for every one of us to prosper. Come on, somebody. I'm here to submit to you that we are destined to prosper even as our soul prospers. It is the will of God, amen, for us to be able to walk in that unction and in that anointing of the Holy Ghost where God can use us to destroy the yoke. Amen. And lift the burden in the lives of people in our communities. Stay with me tonight. But I want you to understand that all of this comes at a price. It comes with an arrangement. And I'm here to submit to you that if you stay in the arrangement, you're going to see it happen. Amen. I said if you stay in the arrangement, you're going to see it happen. But now's not the time to jump ship. Now's not the time.
Amen. So we need tonight that before every business deal is ever complete, there must first be some arrangements made. My parents have been in real estate and contracting for many years, just recently retired. And uh, my wife still works at the real estate office. I used to sell real estate for a short time and uh, while I was helping my parents. And uh, I come to realize that when you're in real estate and the buying and selling of property, that legally you are required to do certain things. And if you do not fulfill those legal tenets of, of that contract, that it can be considered void. And people can be released from the bonds of that contract. In real estate, you come, you find a piece of property. Many of you already know and something that you like. Well, you find a real estate agent that has the property listed. Or you hire a real estate agent to, uh, to contact them. And when you sit down with them, you discover how much they want for it. You're interested in the appraisal value. You want to know what's on the property. Do you have any water running through it? Are there any ponds there? Are there any creeks there? Hardwoods or pine? Or do you have both? What type of home is there? What's the square footage? What's the heat and cool space? So on. And when you find out the details, you consider the price they're asking. Then you decide on what you're going to offer and then you start the negotiations uh, and they look at that offer and they say well that's a little low they'll give a counter offer until finally there is an agreement everybody said an agreement yeah. an agreement made where they sit down uh, at the closing table uh, and there they begin to sign it uh, it's no longer a verbal contention uh, but it's something that now I'm going to put my name uh, on the dotted line I am yeah. committed uh, yeah. to what about to do here. I have the finances and I've got the plan. All they need is for me to buy in to the plan. Are you hearing me right now? I'm submitting to you that if you want it, you're going to have to get in the arrangement. Before we could hear the melodious sounds of the songs that we heard in this service tonight, that we must first have them arranged or placed upon the score sheet for the musician to be able to interpret and read the music that is on the score sheet. Or perhaps in the mind or the ear of the composer as they begin to articulate the sounds upon respective instruments that they're playing. Hey Amen. It all comes with an arrangement. If it's going to make sense, then there's got to be a, an arrangement before we can behold the glory of the stars and the heavens decorated in their brilliance as God placed them in the sky. In fact, God tells us in His Word that He hung them on nothing. I submit to you that it's more than nothing. He hung them there by a word. Are you hearing me? A word that is forever settled in heaven. I'm preaching to you now. for us today. God sets them in their order. Everybody said order. I'm here to tell you sometimes even order can become confusing. But it's not until you stay with the order of things as God lays them out that you begin to understand as the old song said, we understand it better by and by. Yes, sir. Come on. That's right. Hallelujah. I want you to understand when God makes the arrangements, He is asking for us to give Him complete control. Amen. For us to relinquish all authority unto Him. Right. That when God wants us to buy into the arrangement, amen, it doesn't mean that we will never understand, but it simply means that we will trust. That's right. 
It sure is quiet, but I'm going to talk to you. Don't freeze out on me right now. For some of you, it may not be a message for you, but you listen to this preacher. You listen to me well. I want to submit to you, amen, for your consideration that when God makes that arrangement, it also calls for our trust. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on. That's right. Trust that, number one, He is a working power in our present. In our lives, it's often amazing how that time and events and, and circumstances and situations that come along often cloud our memory of what God has said. And it oftentimes blocks out our awareness of what God is doing, uh, amen, in the future and uh, what God has arranged in our present. Listen to me. We often see God as a God that performs well in yesterday's time. We mentioned a little bit about that today. We, God, we think about God. Well, God did it then, and God did it for them, and God did it for someone else. And uh, I've heard the testimonies of what God did yesteryear and yesterday and last week. Uh, amen. But we have a hard time thinking about that God of yesterday. Uh, it's the same God that's working in our present. Uh, yes. like Martha, we relegate some things to the future. We know that Lazarus will live again. Uh, I mentioned that to you this morning. Uh, but God is not just a God. God of our future. Yeah. Amen. God is not just a God that yeah. says, hey, I'll be there when you get there. But God wants us to start bringing things back to the focus. Yeah. Amen. Where we look our trouble in the face. Oh, and we are looking at our storm in the eye. Oh, and we remind ourselves oh, who our God is. Yeah. We have a hard time seeing him as a working, vibrant force in our present world, in the now. And that is why Hebrews tells us here, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now faith, this present faith. It is the substance. It is the handle on the coffee cup. Praise God. It's something that you can get a hold of. Are you listening to me? God doesn't, God doesn't give us promises that are the will of the wisp. It's not something that flies away on the slightest breeze that blows. But it is something that God said, just get a hold of this thing and don't let go. The problem is too many people are buying in to what the devil is selling. That's trying to pull you out of the arrangement that God has for you. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to negate. You've got to cross through all plan B's. And you've got to stick with the arrangement that God has for you today. Amen. Right. 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 Glory. Yes. Yes. God doesn't have to second guess himself. Right. See it? Right. He speaks it. That's exactly what he will do. That's right. And this number is chapter 21, I believe it is, said, God is not a man that he should lie, right. yeah. neither the son of man that he should repent. <coughs> Hath he not said, and shall he not do it? Has he not spoken, and shall he not bring it to pass? Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. I didn't say that. His word says that. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now faith is a substance of things so far. It is the evidence of things not seen. Let's examine it. It is substance of things uh, hoped for, things uh, that we hope for. I want you to understand uh, that if we had it, we wouldn't hope for it because it already would be here. Uh, but we are understanding this one thing, uh, that when we hope for something, uh, it is built upon the fact that it will happen. Uh, yes. We just simply yes. in faith and patience wait for it, uh, the scripture tells us. Uh, and so we just keep pushing forward. Uh, I don't have to see. Uh, I know. I get in the airplane. I fly all over the United States. But I want you to know I do not worry about that pilot and where he's taking me. I know I got on that plane. I went down the passenger tunnel. I found my seat and I buckled up and said, let's go. I felt the plane take off. And I'm here to tell you there has been turbulence along the way. There's been struggle along the way. Sometimes there's been rerouting. And it took maybe a little longer than I anticipated. Substance of things 
hoped for. Thank you, Jesus. Evidence of things not seen. Yes, yes, yes. Listen to me today. It's evidence of things not seen. Your faith. That's why people, they can look at you and say, you still believe in all that? That's right. Yeah, come on. Come on. If I'd have been you, I'd have gave up a long time ago. You've heard it? Yeah. Come on. But the fact that you just keep on going, Brother Palmer. That's right. Brother Bice. The fact that you just keep on right. going on. Exactly. Right. Right. What God's got going on right. at the church. Right. Amen. Regardless of people, regardless of folks that just didn't want to buy into it, that didn't want to get in the arrangement, uh -huh. you just kept on trucking. You said, man, I'd have lived there a long time ago. But you know what? God had a plan. God had an arrangement. Yeah. And he's yeah. got through doing yeah. what he wants. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to do exactly what he said he'd do. He's going to bring the past. Yeah. The finances are too bad. Testimony of the child of God. Every okay, preacher in this building, it is our testimony of faith. Yes, sir. Because I just keep going. Yeah. And right. going. Right. And going. That's right. You're going to drive the devil crazy? Just come to church and keep on confessing Ooh. it. You want to drive the devil nuts? Uh, just keep coming to the prayer room uh, with your hands uplifted uh, when everything seems to be going in reverse uh, in your arrangement. Are you hearing me? You just keep on being faithful. You just keep on trusting uh, because God uh, is going uh, to do this. Yes, he is. Amen. Come on, Praise God. The Bible tells us that by it, what now faith, the elders obtained a good report. That's right. I'm here to submit to you that it's not just about you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's not just about me. It's about the testimony of Christ. Amen. In us. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. How do you know that they were great men and women of God? He said, because they were faithful even when things were not in their favor. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. The Bible said, by faith, Abraham walked with God, or Abram, rather, walked with God. The Bible tells us he obeyed the will of God, and God made the arrangements in Abram's life. That's right. When Abram went out to follow the voice of God, the Bible tells us that, that he didn't have a Bible. He didn't even have a road map. He simply heard the voice. Right. And he began to follow what God said to do. Right. He simply walked on the arrangements that God had made. Yeah. He heard the voice of God say, Everywhere you put the sole of your feet, I'll give you the land. You look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. He said, As far as you can see. He said, I'm going to give it to you. That's my promise to you, Abram. You, if you're able to count the, the stars in the sky, and uh, and you're able to count them, the, the word uses it's an old English term called tell. It means uh, to count it up. Are you hearing me? To count it. If you can count it up, uh, then, 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 then that'll be the limitation, amen, of what I'll do. Look at the sand of the seashore. If you can, uh, if you just start counting all the grains of sand, then there I'm going to put the limit to the promise that I'm giving you. But I love Abram because he is the father of the faithful. And a faithful man doesn't go around putting limits on what God said. He was already going to Amen. 
I got one good amen and the rest of you look like me like a little bit. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bash. I feel that. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like, my God, these idiots that I got a pastor, God, why'd you bring me here? I'm just going to tell it like it is. Is that all right? <laughs> oh, the underlying statement is there don't come to church to be an idiot. <laughs> You know, I love you. I got a big catch. Praise God. I want you to understand that, that sometimes we're, we're all just seemingly kind of floating along through this thing like we're in a, in a, in a, in a river without a paddle. We're in the boat. We're trying to steer it. But I'm here to tell you sometimes you just got to let God have this thing. Yes, yes, yes. I told your pastor when we pastored in Gulfport and while we were there we followed a situation and I'm not going to go into the details about the situation I'm just going to simply say it wasn't all it was made up to be uh -huh. and we got there and we just dug our heels in in my hometown of Gulfport and I made up my mind regardless of what we're seeing I know I've heard from God I have pastors call me from all over the United States. Mark McCool, what are you doing? Have you lost your senses? Have you gone crazy? You are an evangelist. What are you doing here? I said, I'm doing the work of the evangelist. I'm out here trying to win souls. I'm trying to get in here and dig something out here in this city. There's people here that never heard the gospel. This is my hometown. Hey Amen. I'm a thousand of people out here. We started with three little old women, hey amen, and my family of five. With eight people the first month. And then it built up to 10. And then it built up to 12. It built up to 15. And also on 1820. And we just kept going after backsliders and brand new people and teaching Bible studies and knocking doors, putting out the door hangers. I don't know where it's going to lead, but I'll just keep doing what I know is the right thing to do. Watched that church of three to three and a half years go from a church of eight to a church of 75. We were praying, fast and reaching out, building on the word of God, building on prayer. We just caught in the arrangement, and God gave the increase. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. 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 That's good. Abram just got in the arrangement. He did not know where he was going. It didn't make sense to him. He just knew I gotta do it. That's right. He simply walked on the arrangement. And with that, God expanded his purpose. That's Amen. right, brother. Amen. God grew his plan. Oh yes. 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 And that's why the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28, and we know, everybody said we know. We know. Our problem is that sometimes we're saying, Well, I really don't know about that. Come on. The Romans said, we know all things work together. It's an arrangement. That's right. For the good of them that love God. Do you love God? Yes. 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 Now, I'm really going to ask you the, the cliffhanger question. Do you really love God? Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Mm. Do you love Him enough to follow Him when you don't understand? Yes. When it doesn't. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. 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 When it doesn't make sense. Yeah. When you don't have any money. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. yes. I felt that come back. Come on. <laughs> come on, brother. Tell it again. Hallelujah. For whom you did for no. Anybody know the Lord knows you? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I got news for you. He just don't know you. He knows everything about you. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. He knows you're in from the beginning. That's right. right. Amen. Uh, so you still ain't got it. I, I want you to understand something. That he knows you so well that the very hairs of your head are numbered. Not counted, but numbered. Yes. Come, on, come on. That means that every hair that's been on your head from the time that you were conceived. Conceived. To the time you draw your last heavy breath of life, God knows it. That's right. That's right. He's the one that calls the stars by name, folks. Come on. That's right. Come on, come on brother. Amen. And you tell me God ain't in control. Oh, on, that's on, right. On, yes, sir. On. I got news for you tonight. God has an arrangement. Yes, yes, yes he does. Yes, 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 he did for no, he did predestinate. There it is. Uh-huh. Oh, 
Right. I'm not talking about Calvinism predestination. Yeah, I'm right. talking about arrangement predestination. Yeah, right. That's right. I'm in the book. Stay with me. That's right. Stay with me. This ought to mean something to you. For he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. If I get to the arrangement, there's going to be conforming to... Not only in sonship and being a Christian, yeah. I'm going to conform to the will and the plan of God. Has. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Let me help you. Let me help you. Being conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. You see, the witness of that transformation cannot come until we get in the arrangement yeah. and stay there. Stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, there it is again. Then he also called. Let me tell you what happens when you stay in this thing. It comes with a calling. Yes, it is. A calling to purpose. It may not be to preach, but it is called to a purpose. That's right. To fulfill that plan. Yes. And whom he called, he also did what? Justified. Justified, yes. Quit trying to fight battles that were not yours to fight. That's right. Amen. Come on, man. That's right. Let God justify you. Let God vindicate you. Amen. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Putting your hands on it all over again. <laughs> Let it go. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Let it. <coughs> That's right, bro. <coughs> Whom he justified, he also glorified. Do you understand what that means? If you stay in the arrangement and you just walk with God and let God fight these battles, he's going to get glory out of this. And that glory, he's going to share with you. That's right. That's right. Yes. I understand the Bible says that his glory he will not give unto another. But the Bible also teaches that we as his people, we're going to share in that glory. That's right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yes, it does. God's made some arrangements. And that's why I love verse 31. You ready? You know what it says? What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's right. Amen. That's good. Yes, sir. Come on. I just want to bring an encouraging word to you. I know we could get into this and and we can pray for people to minister. I understand all that. But that's not near as important as this. That's right. Come on, bro. Joseph, as well as his brethren, never saw the hand of God as a work of deliverance and as an arrangement until they saw it. Everybody say hindsight. hindsight. Somebody say hindsight's 2020. Hindsight's 2020. And it was only after the journey of rejection and denial and alienation and hatred and suffering and letdowns and bitter disappointment and famine did God bring them back together. Everybody said together? Yeah. I'm here to tell you, God knows what He's doing. Yes, yes He does. Come on, brother. Come on. He sure does. Brother Dice, God's fixing to bring some things back together. Amen. Come on. He's bringing it back together. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let God work on it. <coughs> Let God do this. Yes. God's going to take care of it. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what's been done. That's right. Praise God. You hold on to what I'm saying. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost kind of word for you and your wife tonight. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Only after the journey. Everybody said the journey. Right. Somebody say the arrangement. the arrangement. Did God bring it back together in reconciliation and forgiveness? Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Genesis 45 tells us, Joseph says to his brethren, Come near to me, I pray. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. And now, therefore, don't be grieved or angry with yourselves. Do you see? He's giving them the benefit of the doubt all through this conversation where he's pulled them aside into private. And he said, You did me wrong. He could have drew the sword. He could have had him executed. He could have gone on his life's way. Amen. And he could have continued to rule in Egypt. But he refused to do it because God opened up his eyes to see something at that very moment. Then God used the family to bring it back together. Again, oh, you're not kidding me. God knows how to bring it back together. Don't despise it. Don't show me. Don't push your storm. God's going to bring this back together. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, God. Don't be angry yourselves. Let your soul be hither. 
Listen to what Joseph says. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Here's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. Oh, yes. You just think God's picking at you. You think God's just, you know, letting the devil beat your brains out. And you don't understand. You're an arrangement. Even though it don't make sense. God's, God's using all this to bring salvation and deliverance and reconciliation. Because it doesn't stop there. God's got a plan that's weaving through the tapestry of your life, brother. Listen to me, sister. And the Bible tells us so it was that even in Egypt the hand of God reached down with an arrangement that really had yet to be fulfilled. And so as they become content in Egypt, which was not the will of God, God allows affliction to come. Yes. And this is where you've got to let God operate in the lives of others, yes. not just yourself. Come on. Amen. Am I helping anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 The Bible said there arose another king mm -hmm. over Egypt that did not know Joseph nor the God of Israel. That's right. And he begins to afflict and enslave. And now he's got an insane plan to kill all the male children in Israel. That's right. And sometimes God allows stuff like that for this very reason. To force a desperate cry out of the heart of his people. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why we're going through what we're going through in this nation. That's right. I believe that. I believe that too. Yes, sir. God's allowing this stuff to happen for us to come back to a place where we really pray. That's right. Amen. Come I'm going to say it like the old timer said the days of lip laboring are over. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. It's time for real intercessory. That's prayer. right. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. Come on. And God uses this. He puts into motion the wheels of providential justice and He begins to make arrangements in the form of a child, a basket, and a river. That's right. And it's here from the banks of the Nile in our text. Jockey bed wades out into the mud. And among the serpents and the crocodiles. She's carrying everything that means <coughs> her life and the posterity to come. come on. Here she eases out holding promises. And more than just a promise, it was her deliverance. Right, 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 right. 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 And she wades out into the Nile and she releases that basket to the providence of God. Sometimes God does things in our lives, Brother Bias, and He says, all right, you've had it a while now. Now it's time for you to let me take over. That's right. See yes. As pastors, we try to help people. We try to work with people. We do our best to, to somehow get them to come around and, and we pet them and then we rebuke them and then we try to do other things and try to get it all. But sometimes it's just, but after a while, you just got to let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, come on. That's right. Well, that's kind of cruel. No, it means you love them. That's right. Mm -hmm. You love them enough to entrust them to God. Right. Parents, I'm here to tell you, sometimes you got to let go and let your children that's have right. it. That's right. Come on, brother. Hmm. I'm not trying to pastor nobody. This, this man right here, I'm sitting with him in this church. Yes. This is your pastor. Yeah. I'm a guest here. I, I am trying to help you understand there are times that you need to quit trying to fight battles that were not yours to fight. That's right. That's right. And that's why your spirit stays frustrated. That's why you continually stay all bent out of shape. And that's why it is counteractive to your faith. And that's why you're struggling. Come on, struggling in your prayer life, Pastor's wife. I love you, but I'm talking to you today. I'm trying to help us. Dad, that's why you're struggling. Mom, that's why you're struggling. Is because you're trying to fight battles that will not be able to fight. That's right. Yes, sir. <coughs> God, <you're coughs> <out behind. coughs> and sometimes the truth does hurt. Yes, it does. I don't think for one second that this preacher right here is trying to preach down to you. I'm here to tell you, I walk in the same, same shoe leather you do. That's right. That's right, brother. Come on. And that's where her release, listen to me, her release became her deliverance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Every broken chain 
in Goshen. Every door marked with blood. Every child of God that walked through the sea. Yes. And watched the miracle hand of God work. Come on. Saw it because of one woman was ready to release it. I see it. What revival? I, I got a lot to preach. I, I'm not going to get preach. What revival in your family? What revival in your church? What work of God in your life on a personal level is contingent upon your release? Yeah. Sometimes you've got to say, God, I know this is an arrangement I don't understand. Second Samuel tells about David. He goes into the valley of Rephaim, in the valley of giants. Here David's inquired of the Lord. Do you want me to go up and you want me to fetch a compass? You want to get direction how to get over there? What do you want me to do, God? And you, you want me to go in there and do like I did before? You know, a lot of folks now they think, well, it worked one time, I'll just do it again. They never stop long enough to really pray. <laughs> And find out what God says. That's right. Amen. That's right, brother. And the Lord said, No, I don't want you to do that. I'll tell you what you do, David. I'm going to do something you've never seen before. I'm going to do something that's just going to blow your mind. I want you to understand how much in control I am in your life and the good things I have in store for you. I want you to get your little army. I want you to go over here. And I want you to just kind of get up under the mulberry trees over there and stand in the shade. <coughs> Hot sun, just go in there, in the, in the shade. And he says, when you hear the the sound of a going. Now, I don't know if that means much to you. That's that's kind of old English. Let me let me break it down for you. The the sound of a going was the sound of marching feet. When you it wasn't wind blowing through the trees, folks. David heard it feet marching and what it was the angelic coast was above them marching through the tops mulberry trees you listening to me mm -hmm. moving on into battle on. fighting the battle right they were meant to fight that's right oh god have mercy mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. let god make this arrangement let God order your footsteps. Let God take control of this thing. Every saint of God that goes to this church, you need to start getting in line and marching in cadence with your pastor. That's and right. you need to do, follow him as he follows Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right, man. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Truth. Come on. Come on, brother. And let it be. Everybody say, let it be. Let, let it be. be. Now look, long before the Beatles ever sang that song, I got news for you. God <laughs> had to <the> sing <laughs> Uh, come up in here with all that beatnik stuff. <laughs> <laughs> let it be. Everybody say let it be. Let it be. That when you hear us the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then, everybody said then. 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 Some of y'all are saying hurry up and wait. <laughs> but then thou shalt bestir thyself. Yes. And then the Lord shall go before thee and smite the host of the Philistine. Jesus. Let me, let me break this down. Let me get you out here, all right? When God makes the arrangements, I'm telling you, great things will happen. That's right. That's, right. That's it. Right. That's right. Let, let me tell you what he does. He causes the walls of Jericho to fall. Yes. He causes Gideon's 300 to prevail. Come on. He blinds the host of Syria for Elijah to serve. Yes. He can turn back Samaria then and 180,000 Assyrians for Hezekiah. Uh -huh. Because one man was determined to stay in the arrangement of God. 
Come on, brother. Let, let me tell you what happens when you let God make the arrangements. That, 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 that He could take three Hebrew boys when they refused to bow down to the idols and not, not bow down and worship while the sackbuts being played and all of the instruments of, of idol worship. And when Nebuchadnezzar finally is so wroth, he said, Hey, I told you, I'm going to give you one more chance. And they said, well, Look, God, I got news for you. We're not bowing down. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and whether God delivers us or not, what they say? We don't know. That's right. We don't know. But be it known unto you, buddy, we will not bow in. That's, right. mm -hmm. That's right. And so he's so mad, he has to crank it up seven times hotter than it's ever been. And in fact, it's so hot that when, when those big guys are about to throw me and open the door, they just, whoa, they're consumed. That's right. That's right. It, is, it is my idea that Take for what's worth. It is my idea that when the door opened, that they actually burst into flames. Amen. Amen. Right. Come on. That's right. Come on. And when somebody could get them to the gate, they just chunked them on in. Mm -hmm. They're bound. Hello? All right. I'll tell you what God could do. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm fixing to go get somebody's theology. I'm going to get you out of here, I promise. I know you're tired. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I know Listen to me. Even when you feel bound, God brings victory when you're in the arrangement. Oh, come on. That's right. Come on. Yeah, that's right, bro. Come on, come on bro. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's a play of the enemy. That, oh, you're bound. You'll never, you know, you, you can't break through in prayer. You ain't, you know, you're, you're struggling in your prayer like, you know what? I'm just staying in this arrangement, baby. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on, bro. I ain't buying any knowledge. <laughs> Come on. I'm staying in the arrangement. That's right. That's right. Staying right. in the arrangement. Next thing you know, fourth man in the fire shows up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, did we throw three men in there? Sure did. I see four walking around in there. And one of them looks like the Son of God. Now, I'm not going to get into all the theology about who he was. But I will say this. He was there in his presence. He stayed with me. His presence <laughs> was the very thing that undid their fetters. Uh -huh. And kept uh -huh. them from burning. That's yes, right. That's yes. Right. Amen. You, you don't understand what the work of the Holy Ghost is doing in your life right now. That's right. Mm. That's right. Come on, brother. Mm. Come on. God's keeping you in the middle of this trial. Yeah. That's right. God's helping you keep your sanity in the middle of this. Yes. Yes. As long as you quit trying to fight the battle, let God take this. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel it coming out of me. I just got to talk to you tonight. I learned a long time ago, spit and speed is not the one that breaks together. <coughs> we need the word. That's, That's right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Amen. Hebrews 10, 36. Let's all stay. I'm going to run through some scripture and get you out of here. Is that all right? Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patience. Everybody said patience. 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 That after, everybody said after, after, you have done the will of God. Uh -huh. Well, I thought if I did the will of God, bam, it's like putting a quarter in the gun bottle. See, it's going to come out. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. Like <laughs> I'm going to do like some folks that wear that in scripture. <laughs> you have need of patience after that you have done the will of God. That you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come uh -huh. and not tarry. That's right. That's right. You know, it may take a little while, but God will complete what he's doing because he's made some arrangements. That's right. That's right. That's it, For he that has begun a good work. That's right. Shall complete to the day of Jesus Christ. Psalm 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord. Everybody said, wait. 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 Turn around and say, wait. 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 Oh, I know you all want to wait. 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 Be of good courage. Turn your to tell your neighbor, say, cheer up. You grow cheer, cheer, cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Amen. Because he shall strengthen your heart. Oh, yeah. Right. Wait, I say on the Lord. 
Psalm 37 is sitting at rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man that bringeth the wicked devices to pass. Skip down to verse 34. He says, wait and keep his way. And he shall exalt you to inherit the land. That's right. In Isaiah 40 and 28, one of my favorite verses. Hast thou not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching for his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them who have no might, Increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. Oh, but I got an encouraging word from Isaiah that said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. Yes, sir. They shall not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen to me. There, there's a day that it's going to be better. And it's going to go smoother. And, uh, and, and it's going to feel more alive than it's ever felt before. Uh, and the promise that you held so dear that you were so willing to release back into the care and the providence of God uh, is going to come back. And it's going to be greater than you could have ever. Oh, yes. 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 Come on, brother. Greater days for this church in Chantilla. Hallelujah. Greater days, my brother. Yes. You know why? Because we're in a divine arrangement of God. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. That God's going to do it. Come on. All He needs for us to do, just be faithful. Yes. Don't be discouraged. Not now. You've come too close. You've run so far. You prayed too many prayers. And you've taken upon yourself to believe when no one else thought it was possible. I want us to lift our hands all over this building. That's why if you're a new convert, you've got every reason to stay in the church. No matter how bad your days are, there is still a God that is good and has a plan for your life. That's why regardless of what's going on and disturbances in your families and rocky times in your marriage, I want to submit to you that God has an arrangement. Just stay with Him. Keep walking with Him. Everything is going to be all right. Come on, let's look the Lord. I'm open to these altars if you desire to go. Amen. If you want to gather around the front as a church family, amen, I encourage you. Let's do that. Amen. We'll just pray together as a church family. Amen. All oh, one big church family right now, washed in His blood, purchased with a precious name. Let's love Him right now. But God's made some arrangements. Amen. God has made some arrangements.